Hello, friends. Jim here. Welcome to Science Talk. And I uh, want to share with you this article that was published on the online publication Inside Climate News. It uh, comes from basically one year ago, in August of 2022. Um, <laughs> this is one of the... Uh, file that I had to find after my uh, laptop went on its little adventure <laughs> earlier this year. Anyway, it's an important study because of what's going on in the oceans right now. You see here in the headline, it's happened before. Paleoclimate study shows warming oceans could lead to a spike in seabed methane emissions. Shallow deposits of frozen methane beneath oceans may be more vulnerable to thawing than previously considered or known. And uh, a photo of a lead here in the, the ocean there. Increasing runoff of frigid meltwater from the Greenland ice sheet is disrupting an Atlantic Ocean current, AMOC, that moves warm and cold waters between the Arctic and Southern Oceans, which could lead to more thawing of frozen methane in partially organic seabed sediments. So the slowdown of a key ocean current, and they're referring to uh, uh, the meridional overturn uh, circulation in the North Atlantic could release methane that is frozen in layers of organic seabed sediment along some of the world's coastlines. Cold temperatures and high pressure on seafloors currently sequester about one-sixth of the world's methane, a potent but short-lived greenhouse gas. Well, remember, methane oxidizes the CO2, so its effect is there for quite some time. And they usually found an ice-like form called methane hydrates or clathrates. Sudden thawing of those clathrates could result in a surge of methane emissions that would add to the overall warming of the planet. So it is a paper that was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences shows that some of the shallower layers in the Atlantic Ocean could be more vulnerable than previously thought to warming that could release that methane and that such events have happened before. The trigger for such warming and thawing, according to the study, is a large inflow of fresh cold water from melting Arctic ice, which can disrupt AMOC, which is a slow ocean heat pump that pushes cold water in the Arctic deep down and southward and warm water to the surface and northward. Temperature density salinity contrast drives the pump, why it's called thermal hailing flows. In recent decades, this influx of water from rapidly melting Arctic ice, particularly the Greenland ice sheet, appears to be weakening the current. Well, we have measurements that indicate that this is slowing down. And these measurements go back 20 years. Uh, I remember reading about a group of researchers out of uh, um, Dalhousie University in uh, uh, Halifax, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, when they first started measuring the, the slowdown in the deep water formation. And more recently, we have Danish and Norwegian oceanographers also measuring a slowdown in deep water formation. And now this, when the current is running as it historically should be, it could warm the ocean at depths of 300 to 1300 meters. Okay? And this could destabilize the methane hydrates that can be found 20 to 30 feet in the seabed. Okay, so they tell you 300 to 1300 meters, and then they turn around and say, 20 to 30 feet. Why can't they just be consistent, say, basically uh, 7 to 10 meters? 
Just saying. Okay, so, and this has happened before to have evidence for this. Uh, this is from a statement from University of California, Santa Barbara climate scientist, uh, Sai uh, Weldiab, who uh, led the detailed analysis of ocean and coastal conditions in the Gulf of uh, Guinea. The study covers a 500-year slice of time during the Eemian age, which is about 125,000 years ago. The global average temperature was about 1 to 2 degrees Celsius warmer than now, back in the Eemian, due to changes in the amount of sunlight reaching Earth. Okay, this is a reference to the Milankovitch. You know, changing the tilt of the axis, the precession of the solstices and equinoxes, the changes in the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit all impact how much sunlight, and which is measured in watts per square meter, reaches the surface. The new study's analysis of trace elements in the shells of ancient ocean microorganisms, isotopic fractionation, shows that it was enough to free some methane from its icy condition. The main message of the study is that researchers need to consider temperature changes greater than they are currently looking at, due to the possibility of unexpected feedbacks that can magnify warming, like changing currents or methane releases brought on by higher temperatures. Keep in mind, we are already documenting, you know, the warming waters entering the Arctic Ocean and what it's doing to the methane beds on the, on the shelf system there. You know, the East Siberian uh, shelf, Laptev, Karo Seas, etc. So we're already documenting methane releases increasing from there. And I have done studies, uh, you know, I've done videos looking at studies that have been documenting this. Not only the warming, but the feedback process, the loop process of warming. He's uh, identifying the disruption of the Atlantic heat pump as the cause for a remarkably large warming of 6.8 degrees Celsius in water between 300 and 1300 meters deep in the ancient history of the study area. Basically, you're not sequestering it to death. So now it starts accumulating, especially around the you know, 300 or so meter down, and this leads to stratification. But then you're now, when you have the stratification, any submerged substrate within this zone is going to experience warmer temperatures. That's going to facilitate the thawing of these clathrates and hydrates. And here's a photo of one. It's a photo of, of a uh, gas hydrate, white ice-like material. So it's a combination of water and methane. And we have a whole bunch, you can see a bunch of mussels okay, in, embedded into the ice. This is on the seafloor, northern Gulf of Mexico. But in the past, that amount of warming was enough to thaw frozen methane. And the climate events and feedback loops they documented can serve as an analog for the warming the planet is currently undergoing. Well, you have said that during the era they studied, the Greenland ice sheet melted to a smaller size than today, and that its meltwater basically disturbed ocean circulation, causing greater warming at depth that can thaw frozen methane hydrates. The deeper water responds not only to the warming of the air, but to other processes that make the warming exceptionally strong, exceptionally large, like large influxes of cold melt water. Now there's a little, we need to, uh, un, uh, exp, uh, let me back up here and explain something here. It might seem a little counterintuitive. Typically, when the the warm Gulf 
stream water that becomes the North Atlantic drip moves up into the, uh, the Northern Atlantic, right? It's warm and salty. It gives off its heat, moderating the climate in the nearby area. So now it becomes cold and salty, very dense, and it sinks. But it still has some heat content with it that it takes with it to depth, eventually sinking all the way down to about 2,000 meters. So you can see that's greater than the 300 and 1,300 meters the sighting here, and that returns back for, uh, uh, back south <clears throat> at the North Atlantic deep water. What they're getting at is the intermediate water layers. And some of those intermediate water layers is, whoa, what? The Mediterranean water. The waters that leave the Mediterranean Sea becomes the Atlantic intermediate water which is found in that 300 to 1,000 meter range. So there are people saying, oh, the Gulf Stream is going to collapse. That's wrong. The Gulf Stream is not going to collapse. It may slow down, but it's not going to collapse. Why is it not going to collapse? Because Earth is a round object. It has a lot of water sloshing around on it, and it's rotating. And there's wind that blows because it's still going to be heating differentials in the atmosphere that's going to create wind. The wind imparts a, a you know a pressure, you know a stress on the surface. So as long as there's wind and the planet is rotating, there's going to be a Gulf Stream. In fact, there's going to be western boundary currents. It's basically, you know, balancing vorticity concerns, Coriolis effect, pressure gradient. That's what creates gyres in the oceans, really. I did a whole video on rotating system. Check that out. So the Gulf Stream will, cont will continue to, to be there. The North Atlantic drift, however, may slow or stop. AMOC is slowing, and it could possibly come to a complete stop. That remains to be seen. We have evidence of it happening before in the, in the past. And this is one example of what they're citing here. So what they're talking about is that you're not, you're going to get the stratification. You've heard me discuss stratification numerous times. You're going to start getting the stratification where due to, even though it's warmer waters, it has a higher salinity, so it's more dense. So it's going to be found in this intermediate layers. And this warmer temperature will be impacting the substrate. That's basically what the, getting at here whereas before you would have the overturn and the overturn mixes the temperature so that you get a more uniform vertical profile and don't forget when you have the uh, amoc forming and you got the north atlantic deep water forming you it's flowing south through volume uh, conservation you then fill in you, you've got at Antarctic bottom water moving northward underneath the North Atlantic deep water. Well, that's kind of cold water. So what they're getting at here is that you're starting, they're alluding to oceans stratifying. And you see me do how many videos talking about the stratification of the oceans. Warming of 1 to 3 degrees Celsius, as many models currently predict, would not thaw the methane hydrates. So this has led some researchers to discount the possibility of a surge of methane releases from the sea floor. Uh, possibility of the oceans warming even more so is very real and that needs to be accounted for. And now... It's saying warming of 1 to 3 degrees Celsius. It's not clear to me if they're referring to the atmosphere or to the oceans. 
One to three degrees C in the ocean is significant. The study is significant because it identifies a new mechanism by which waters at middle level in the ocean could warm up regionally beyond expected average changes, said Australian climate scientist Pep Cannadale, not involved in the study. Current climate projections, uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, oh, Nemesis IPCC, aside from those based on the highest emission scenarios, show intermediate depth ocean temperatures are unlikely to cross the threshold of hydrate instability, said Canada, who's the executive director, director of the Global Carbon Project and a co-lead author of an IPCC report chapter that covers methane hydrates. However, the new study makes a remote prospect for a very low probability high impact event on hydrate destabilization more real than previously thought. Now, in the study, I took a look at it, so it was kind of detailed and wonky, but they were actually looking at um, off the coast of Africa, west, you know, like the Ivory Coast area. So they're looking at that region, uh, the western coast of Africa, which would be the eastern side of the Atlantic Ocean. That's where they were looking at their study. Now, okay, he's talking about those methane hydrates and that stability. What about up in the Arctic? Okay. That is definitely fine. And I've done videos on that. Chapter 5 of the IPCC's August 2021 Physical Science Report concluded that emissions from subsea and permafrost methane hydrate are not expected to change substantially in the 21st century. I... I question that statement a bit. Let's just put it that way. While the paper adds to the body of knowledge about the relationship to seabed and ocean chemistry and climate change, it didn't consider all the geological mechanisms required to deliver gas from the seafloor to the atmosphere, said Warren Wood, a methane hydrate expert who studies geology and geophysics with the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory in Stennis, Mississippi. Release of all the gas along an entire continental margin suddenly enough to reach the atmosphere would require an extremely rare and catastrophic event. This kind of event is alluded to by the authors, but without evidence. Well, um, <clears throat> that's one of the concerns of uh, scientists who look at the methane issue. How much, first of all, how much is there? And at what rate does it get it released? Is it, you know, slowly, like a seepage, or is it in, in huge events? In a large event, we have a, a large expulsion. That's one of the major concerns, and we really don't know the answer to that. So the point is, though, whether it's a catastrophic event, as they're saying here, or in their critique, or whether slow seepage, the point is, you are still, you know, you're still releasing methane. Now, it could be, it could interact in the water column, or it could just go right through the water column, right to the atmosphere. But it's still going to be a, an additional amount of methane. What is the rate? How much over what time period? We don't know. Richard Alley, a Penn State climate scientist, has been studying ice sheets and glaciers for decades. Say the paper holds a lot of important data, but noted that not all of the greenhouse gas that could be released from the seabed by warming would end up in the atmosphere to further warm the climate. That, that's, and I just alluded to that. that. That's the correct statement. Much and perhaps almost all of the carbon and the methane ended up in the ocean. Some of it oxidized, becomes CO2. Some of it went into the carbonate of the shells that were studied. And the remaining big question is how much of that methane got into the atmosphere. Okay. So if it becomes CO2, if it, then the CO2, if it's in solution in the water, well, we know that's going to do what? It's going to decrease the pH. So it's going to increase acidity. If it increases the acidity, what's that going to do to the lysocline? 
You might get to the point where the lines of client get shallower and shallower, making it more and more difficult for organisms to precipitate the shells that they require. That increases their mortality. So here are some of the other aspects, you know, the little side aspects, if you will, of what happens when methane gets released from the oceans. Methane releases from the thawing seafloor due to warming oceans would probably happen much slower than those from other emission sources driving climate change, such as, you know, burning fossil fuels. Well, the upset study of the past is not an exact prediction for the future, but caution against ignoring such clues in the ancient climate, especially since many climate impacts are outrunning the projections generated by models. Models sometimes overestimate, sometimes underestimate, and this case seems like an underestimation to me. We're bringing basically some perspective and example from a time that's not so remote when the world was as warm as what we're projected to have in the next 80 to 100 years <clears throat> and when the Greenland ice sheet was much smaller. So, um, well, you know, it's understandable to, uh, you know, to uh, have critiques. I mean, that's science. But at the same point, you cannot ignore the findings here. Now, I've, I've mentioned some of the potential issues. I mentioned some of the uh, aspects that need to be uh, teased out better. How much is there? What is the rate? And so on. And we might want to start doing that now. You know, how much is uh, in these uh, shelf systems? How much methane is there? What is the temperature there? How does the temperature impact the substrate? And at what rate is this stuff being released? We need to get a handle on those. We really do. But you also need to also consider all the ocean heat content. And the oceans are really actually warming up a lot more than some of the scientists making their critiques here are uh, willing to acknowledge. <clears throat> so we have this these sudden, you know, massive ocean heat content all that heat energy, well, that could translate into rapid degradation of the seabed, facilitating increased rapid releases of methane. So, um, wanted to bring this to, to your attention, kind of mull that over in your own, but, um, You've heard me say before, you want to have a handle on what's happening now or in the future, look to the past. Well, these guys did just that, and they're sending us a warning. Will this be heated or not? Remains to be seen. Thank you for your time.